G'day guys, Elfie here. It's been an awfully long time since I uh, put out a classroom recording. I was going back through some of my old footage of the animal cell lesson and went through here and decided that some of the discussions we had in this class were worth producing, even if they um, were quite boring video. I think the discussions themselves that were created by being in Minecraft and the students having, having that opportunity to explore were well worth exploring. So this first clip here is a student talking about about um, ribosomes and why those ribosomes are there and not all of them are just attached to the to the um, endoplasmic reticulum which I think is a really powerful discussion and I love the end bit there where he's discussing with his friend about what it means and then his friend says well what about this and he goes good point let's google it and that's that's a big shift in education I mean I said I don't know to the student and then they've gone well I can find out this information on Google chances are so I'm not the smartest person in the room Google is the smartest person in the room um, and that's a massive shift from from education from many years ago to where the teacher was the fount of all knowledge to where we are now where the teacher is not necessarily um, the giver of knowledge more a guide and a provider of um, the resources for them to find the uh, information they need. What's the efficiency behind having ribosomes and then having them attached to the, to the rough air? I know like the rough air finishes them off and the other ones make them, but like, wouldn't it just be easy just to have ribosomes attached to the rough air and not have ribosomes and not just have like the whole process there? Wouldn't that be more efficient? I don't know. Possibly. Maybe like I don't that. know the reasoning behind it. I just know I, from what we know, this is what happens. Why? I've got no idea. I'm not sure what the evolutionary advantage is, which is what you're asking. Yeah. Oh, that's what I mean. Like when we speak to the guy who does evolution, we should ask him to combine ribosomes and nothing else. Well, yeah, why do they... I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure why. My, my guess... Yeah, see, but even that doesn't make sense. Um, it's a good point. Though. It is a good point. I don't know why they're, they're connected to both. Why there are some free-floating and why there are some connected. In my way of thinking, it is inefficient to have ribosomes and then ribosomes attached to the rough air. Wouldn't it just be easy just to have them attached to the rough air and not have little ribosomes floating around on their own? Well, if the ones that originally were there originally attached to the rough air and just drifted no off knows. after gradual deterioration? That's a good call. Maybe. Google. I'll be That's a good one. This next clip is perhaps my favourite clip from this particular class and this particular map in general so far. Um, the, the, the offhand comment that, that this student did, I mean these two students, you'll see, you can see them down the bottom of the screen if you look close enough. Um, they're down there, they're, they're play fighting in the game and then just this offhand throwaway comment that this student makes at the end of this clip just for me was the best because it shows that he has a real understanding of, of what that particular organelle does and and yeah it was just that moment where I went wow that wouldn't have happened in a classroom <coughs> <coughs> hey guys come on Josh Daniel <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Run away! Lucky, I was going to pick you up to tell you the wires and the sight of you. Oh, probably you at? This next clip um, is where I start doing my teacher thing and, and trying to develop conversations with the kids about exactly what's going on in this in this cell and why I built it the way I did instead of just. Um, giving them a picture and, and doing it the old-fashioned way that I'm used to. Um, so we talk about why the cell uh, membrane is out of that particular colour and why the Golgi and the, the vacuole have a similar, a similar colour scheme as such. Alright, so what we might do, I'm going to teleport you all to me. Alright, now this is a sectioned off area again. Okay, I'll let you have a play around later, but you're all here. Okay, what I want you to do guys is sort of stand somewhere on this platform so you can see the, the vacuole, the Golgi over the other side there and you're not going to be able to avoid the cell membrane. So just stand somewhere where you can see it. Oh, because you just logged in, didn't you? There you go. Alright. I'm going to turn night off. 
All right. So, one thing I'd like to discuss... Josh. Can I just get everyone hands off looking at me for just a second? All right. Daniel. Ta. One thing I, I, what I, put on, I put in your booklet so we could discuss is the reason I chose the colour of three particular organelles, all right? Why do you think the cell membrane, the Golgi apparatus and the vacuole all have a similar colour scheme? All right? The reason is because they're made out of similar substances. The Golgi bodies or the Golgi apparatus... Josh, Daniel. The Golgi bodies or the Golgi apparatus actually make vesicles. And those vesicles are cell membrane, okay, surrounding something. And then they go and merge with the cell membrane. That's how we transport things, some things, out of the cell. So that's why I chose that. Why do you think the vacuole has roughly the same colour scheme? Yeah, so it's the same principle, all right? It's basically part of the cell membrane surrounding a, a fluid space, if you will, all right? The other thing that was in that booklet was the energy. Now, a cell has access to 100% energy, right? Where do you think most of the energy is used? Josh, what's your guess? Mitochondria. So you reckon the mitochondria uses most? Nucleus, and what did you say? You said ribosomes? You said the ER, sorry. All right, any other thoughts about what uses, which of the organelles uses the most energy? We've got three choices, mitochondria, nucleus, and ER. Membranes. The cell membrane, nucleus is already up there, so maybe the cell membrane. All right, so if they're the ones that we think might use the most, which one do you think uses the least energy? Uh, cell membrane. Cell membrane? <laughs> Any others you think use the least amount of energy? Uh, Which one do you think uses the least energy, Ash? Uh, yeah? Lysosome. Sarah? Sorry? Lysosome. Lysosome. Golgi. Any others you think use the least amount of energy? The vacuole. So you need to write something along the lines of, I chose the mitochondria as using the most energy because. All right, so I'd like it in a full sentence and your reasoning. Chels, go. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, I'll read it. Yep, read out just which one uses the most. Um, I think the mitochondria uses the most energy because it's powerhouse in the cell. It's low carb, it's converted into sugar, into something that the cell can use for the energy. Okay, so the mitochondria is, is the most, uses the most energy because it works so hard to convert the energy in sugar into ATP that the cell can use. Okay, Ash. Okay, <laughs> lots of energy in that sentence. So mitochondria because it uses a lot of energy to make energy from other energy. Right, Bridie. Um, I chose the nucleus to use most energy because it's like the brain. The brain does all the thinking about actions and what's important. Okay, so therefore the, the, the brain and the nucleus are the same thing and they, they do the most work? Yeah. Okay, Jade? Okay, so you think because, because all of the instructions for the cell come from the nucleus, therefore it uses the most energy. Okay, Tony? I think everything uses equal amounts of energy more or less because it's all equally important. Okay, so Tony's saying every organelle is equally important to the functioning of the cell and therefore would use the same amount of energy. Chris? Uh, 
nucleus, I guess, because basically the big brain itself. Okay, so. It comes from this, you know, nucleus, go, you know, go do that instead of go keep me. Okay, so nucleus because it gives all the instructions. Josh? Um, the mitochondria because um, it's the power plant of the cell and it turns into the lot of the sugar energy into the usable energy and it powers all the other organelles. Okay, so it powers all the other organelles and therefore uses the most energy. Okay, Sam? Okay, because it's the brain, Sam? <coughs> Nucleus because it's real big. Okay, Jim? Okay, so you would have put ribosome up there if, if you had voted. Okay, so why would you have said the ribosome then? Let's go back to your original answer. Okay, and you think that takes a lot of energy? Okay, so did you hear that up the back there? No. Gemma said she didn't agree with any of them. She thought it would have been the ribosome because they actually have to connect amino acids together into a chain. And she also said it seems a bit silly for the mitochondria to use the most energy because its role is to create energy for the cell. Yeah. All right. Bree? Um, Thanks, Jim. I said the, the nucleus did because um, it does multiple things and it's the centre of the cell. Okay, so it's the centre of the cell and does multiple things. Sarah? Yeah, I'll say it's the control centre. Nucleus because it's a control centre. Yep. Daniel? Okay, so cell membrane because it's so large, okay, and because its job main role is to keep everything in and out. Josh? All right, same as Daniel. All right, so I don't know the answer, and this is why I wanted each of you to say what you thought, because each of your thoughts are valid, all right? Because, I mean, we could, I'm sure someone somewhere knows how much energy is used by each individual organelle, but... But I don't have the answer. I can try and find out for you. But what I wanted to, why I wanted to start this discussion is because why, what are the organelles using the energy for? And as Jem said, does it make sense for the mitochondria to use a stack of energy to create energy? Or would it make more sense for the mitochondria to maybe use a little bit of energy to create more energy? Okay. Now this comes to a question and... What does, what does it take more energy to do? To break something down or to build something? You reckon it takes more energy to break something down? Uh, build. build. So hands up, you've got a 50-50 shot here. Does it take more energy to break something down, like breaking sugar into ATP or breaking sugar up into chemical energy, or does it take more energy to build something, like the ribosome joining amino acids together? Which one takes more energy, to break something down or to build something? Okay, hands up for breaking down. Someone on the internet said, I'm not sure, I think ribosome. Okay, and hands up for it takes more energy to build something. Woo! Okay, now, so you're telling me, and this is where you're going to go, Elfie, you could break one of these chairs, would take more energy to break one of these chairs than it would to build one of these chairs. Okay, so would it be easier to break a wooden chair or to build a wooden chair? Okay, so it depends on your abilities. It depends if you're a tank or not. True. But in terms of energy, is it going to take you more energy to break a chair or build a chair? Build. All right. So building is going to... So to break something down takes less energy than to build something up. All right. You think about it. To break something down, you're going down a hill, aren't you? Energy-wise, you're going down a hill. All right. To build something up, you actually got to push stuff up the hill. Okay, Josh. But like, 
in a cell, isn't it like because like for example like in a plant cell, like it turns all the light and stuff into um, sugars or whatever it does, it turns all the light into sugar. But then it takes like ages for like the enzymes to break it all down. So wouldn't it be take more energy to break it down? This is a looping question. All right, because it takes energy to, to break down the glucose into energy we can use, okay? The reason it takes energy is because you need to make proteins. All right? Enzymes break down stuff? Yeah, enzymes break down stuff, but they don't necessarily require an energy input. It only requires energy to make the protein, to build the protein to do that job. So enzymes are a protein. So enzymes are a protein. <laughs> All right, so enzymes are a protein, and enzymes require energy to build, but don't necessarily require as much energy to break things so it down. So more energy to turn light into glucose than it does for the enzymes to break down. Yes. The standout comment in that particular clip that you've just seen is, is Gemma's, where she says it's, and that discussion about how it seems silly for... Um, a mitochondria to use more energy than any other because its its role is to actually create the energy. Um, that was another really powerful discussion. That's it for this video. Uh, I know that it made pretty boring video as such, but I felt that the discussions we had that were generated by being in this virtual cell were well worth sharing. Um, hopefully more classroom discussions and classroom actual classroom footage coming soon of students working on uh, classifying objects in Minecraft and also exploring the biomes that are, are in Minecraft. Thanks again for watching guys.